Welcome back to our course on Dreamweaver CC. In the previous section we created our first website. It's a very simple website, it only has one page at the moment and that page is called index.html which is the default name we've chosen to use. And what I want to do before we move on to actually making this site visible to the wider world is to just talk a little bit about how things are now in Dreamweaver. We've got our page open and we've got the files panel there. You already know about things like closing that panel, moving out of the way, minimizing it and so on. But what about the page? Well, once I've done a save and until I've made any other changes to the page, if I just click the close button here on the right of the tab that says index.html I close that page. At any time I can open it again. Now I've got a couple of options for opening it. One of them is if I go to the file tab there is an open option that will actually open a browser for me and let me browse to that page. But there's also an open recent option which will list recently open HTML pages. And If I want to open that page I can choose that one and I'm back to where I was. The other thing that I can do, let me just close that again, is within the files panel where you can see a list of my pages, in this case that's just one page, if I double click index.html that's another way to open it up as well. So let's set about getting this website online. I'm just going to minimize the files panel for the moment and close that page. I want to just talk to you a little bit about what you need in order to get a website online. Now there are quite a few options and one or two of them we're not going to go into here. What I'm going to do is to talk to you about what is probably the most straightforward and most popular way for getting a conventional website online. Now quite often you can buy packages that include all of the things you need to get online. That's not quite the approach that we're going to take here. The approach we're going to take is this. First of all, you will need a domain name. Now if you already have a domain name to use, then that's absolutely fine. You can use that domain name. If you don't have a domain name, if you've never had one, they are extremely straightforward to buy. Finding one that somebody else isn't using is a bit more of a challenge sometimes. But if I say wanted to find www.tobyarnott.com, I could type in that name here in the box on this particular domain registration website, click on search, and I'd be told whether that name was available, and I could keep searching until I find a domain name that is available. Now I'm looking at a specific company's website here for web hosting and domain names. There are hundreds of these sites and I'm not recommending this particular one. This is one that I have used in the past but I've used many others as well. And depending on the name and usually the last part of the name .com, .co.uk, .wiki, the many other possible extensions that you can have the price will vary very considerably. You normally buy a domain name with a fee that covers one or two or three or five years of registration of that name. So you need a domain name, that's the first thing. The second thing is you will need web hosting. The particular company's website I'm looking at here, they provide domain names and web hosting and most such companies will also give you quite a bit of help. They normally have an FAQ section, frequently asked or frequently answered questions, and from there you can usually solve most of your problems and answer most of your questions, but some of them have either email help, online help, telephone help, to help you if you get any problems setting up what we're going to be setting up in this section. But these procedures now are pretty well known and if you follow what I'm going to show you and you look at any examples they have on the site that you decide to use for domain name registration and web hosting, I think you'll find it all pretty straightforward. As I mentioned earlier on, we have a local site. In order for that site to be visible to the outside world, we need it to be on a web server and web hosting companies such as this one provide web servers and they will give us space on a web server. We copy our files to that space. 
and from there using our selected domain name we can make our site available to the world. So two things you need to register your domain name and you need to buy the web hosting again typically you'll pay by the month or perhaps by the year web hosting is not expensive nowadays and you can in some situations get free web hosting for instance if you've bought a complete subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud at the time of recording this Adobe will host up to five websites for you so there are a number of options for getting web hosting as well when you set up the web hosting you'll have the opportunity to link your domain name to that web hosting so the web hosting company the ISP will know which domain name you are using so they're the basic steps you need to go through regarding setting up your domain name and setting up your web hosting now let's go back and see how we put all this together in Dreamweaver now all of the information that you need for the next part of this section you should have to hand if any of it is missing if you get to a certain point here and you say well I don't know that your ISP should be able to help you with that information I already have all of the information to hand so to set up my remote site which is a copy of my website on a remote web server go up to the menu and from site select manage sites now at this stage I only have one site Springs Park the one that I created in the previous section you will find over time when you use Dreamweaver more and more that you'll create more and many different websites so the first thing is make sure you've got the correct website selected having selected that website if you go to these little icons just below that list one of them the one which is a sort of pencil says edit the currently selected site which is what we're going to do now there are four pages of information the top one site is selected it's got the site name that I set up and the local site folder what we're going to do though is select the second option servers and we're going to add our remote server now this is where you need the information from your ISP so having selected servers note we have no servers set up at the moment I'm going to click the plus sign and the first thing is to give the remote server a name now a very suitable name here would be just to call it remote but I tend to use the name of the ISP I'm using in this case so I would call that NewNet the name of the ISP that I'm using now the second option is very important connect using there are various ways of copying the local site over to the remote site and FTP which is by far the most common way of doing this for most people is a very straightforward approach but it suffers from the fact that it has the lowest security and if you were actually using a site where confidentiality security is important you might use one of the other options which have in various different ways more security or other additional features now if I click on the drop down here there are other options SFTP secure FTP that is FTP over SSL implicit FTP over SSL explicit local on network web dav and RDS now if your ISP uses any of those you will need to fill in the options that correspond to those I am just going to use FTP here I just want to take you through the process once the process is basically the same with these other options but the information you may have to fill in to go with the option does vary a little bit let's stick with the default FTP now the next thing to enter is the FTP address that we need to copy the files to and this will be supplied by your ISP mine is this now one of the common features here you'll see with the information that I'm putting in is that I have quite a long name here it's springspark.tobiarnott.com springspark is actually a subsite of my regular website tobiarnott.com 
Now, if you've got a new domain name or using one that you've had for a while, you probably won't have such a long name as that. Your address will be something like ftp.johndoe.com or ftp.mywebsite.com. The ISP may not give you the FTP address in that format at all. It may be in a completely different format. But whatever form of address you're given as your FTP address, make sure it's entered correctly in there. And you'll also be given a username and password for access to the server that you're going to copy the files to. So let me now put in my username and password. And when you've done that, there is a test button that you can use just to make sure that you and the web server can talk to each other. Or should I say your copy of Dreamweaver and the web server can talk to each other. Click on test. OK, Dreamweaver connected to your web server successfully. Click on OK and we can carry on. Now put in the root directory. Again, this will be provided by your ISP. And then finally, the URL of your website. That's it. Click on Save. And now my remote server appears in the list of servers. It's called NewNet. The FTP address is there. The connection type is FTP. It's a remote server. Click on Save. I get a warning there about the recreation of what's called the cache. C-A-C-H-E. You'll always get that warning. Just click on OK. And now I should be in a position that I could copy my website over to the web servers of my ISP and look at my website online. But I want to point out one more thing before we do that. I'm in Internet Explorer and I've just typed in the URL that my site will be using. So let's just press enter on that and see what I see. What I actually see is a temporary site that is put in place automatically by my ISP. Now exactly what you'll see here will depend on your ISP. Each ISP tends to put their own content into a temporary site. So although I haven't copied any files over to that remote site yet, I will see this temporary content until I do. So when we come to look at the content in just a moment, you'll see there's already something there. Although it is content that I will be getting rid of in a little while. So I finished managing my site at the moment. Click on Done. And I'm back at the Files panel. Now in the Files panel, I've currently got the local view displayed showing my single page. But now I can switch to the remote server. And when I switch to remote server, the remote server and my copy of Dreamweaver talk to each other. And I can now see a list of the files on the remote server. You possibly were expecting to see nothing there at all. But in fact, what is there, there's a couple of files, index.html, which is nothing to do with my index.html, login.html, and three folders. Now again, exactly what you see here will depend on your ISP, but it will probably be something like this. And these three folders and their contents and those two files between them actually produce that temporary website that I showed you just now. Now what I'm going to do, very simply here, just to get us started, I'm going to switch back to local view. I'm going to make sure index.html is selected. That's my index.html. And I'm going to upload it to the remote server. It will replace the index.html that is there now. Now if I hover over that up pointing arrow, it says put files to remote server, newnet. What I'm going to do is click on that. There's a question there about dependent files. I'll explain that later. For the moment, click on Yes. What it's now done is to upload that single file to the remote server. Now let me just go back into Internet Explorer. And let me refresh my site. Let's see what happens. Welcome to Springs Park. 
Now, my single, rather unimpressive page saying Welcome to Springs Park has replaced the ISP's default page and I have published my website to the internet. Now, I hope that you managed to get to exactly that point yourself and once you get to that point you should give yourself a pat on the back and look forward to doing some work on improving that website from this point forward. That's the end of this section. I'll see you in the next one.